Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Okay, normally I would be showing you guys more about the pedestrian. But I need to take a little break. About five minute break or something like that. And I thought I'd show you guys a cool way to make realistic looking maps in Photoshop. I figured this out on my own and I thought you guys might find this interesting. So this is what it looks like. And I can show you guys how to do this in just a few minutes. Let's get to it. A little bit of coffee. All right, I got Photoshop open here. And obviously before you can make a map, you gotta have some water. So let me show you how to add in water. Let's grab two different colors here. As you can see, there's a dark blue and a light blue. You can just hit X to swap the two. So just make sure you pick like a nice dark ocean blue and then like a lighter, whatever, aqua kind of blue. And so now that you have those two, go to filter, render, clouds. So it took those two colors and just made a bunch of noise with it. So now it's starting to kind of look like water, but to really add in that cool touch, let's go to filter, filter gallery, and then go in, in these drop downs, go to artistic and plastic wrap. So if you could see in here, plastic wrap gives it like a um, reflective glossy look to it and it actually looks like ripples and everything from the ocean. Um, and then you can, you can obviously change the uh, strength a little bit if you wanted it more reflective. I kind of like it a little bit more on the mild side. Uh, smoothness, I kind of like it sharp because it makes it look like there's more detail. Uh, and that looks good, so okay. Boom, so we've got ourselves some water. So now let's just add another layer. It doesn't matter what color you have, you can just start brushing in. After kick so we can see it a little bit better. Let's get a red. So let's say this is our first island right here. So that looks pretty boring, but this is really all it needs for Photoshop to read it and make something really cool. So double click on the layer and here's where all of our options are and this is where we can make it look awesome. So let's start off with bevel and emboss. Boom, I already have it set up pretty high and just make sure that you have it on inner bevel, chiseled hard edges, leave the depth around 100, and the size, that's the, uh, the height of it. As you can see, it kind of like goes down lower and lower and lower, but you want this to be mountainous. So let's bring it up to, ah, 200 looks pretty good. Um, and we wanna keep it sharp, because if you soften it, it just looks like it's out of focus. I don't know, let's put it to eight. Okay, and we'll leave the angle, everything else is good. That's the start of our mountain. And then let's now go to texture. So that just kind of ruins it right away, but you want a tiling texture that just adds some noise to it. So let's pick something that's a little bit less intrusive, maybe this one, and we'll just scale it up so it's a lot smaller and then bring down the depth. Well, we want it kind of, we want it close to zero. So let's just put it at five. Let's put the scale around 500. Okay. So now we want little edges around the island to kind of make it look like maybe there's a beach and it kind of goes out from there. So if you put a stroke on it, it basically puts a line around the edge of the entire layer where the brush stroke is. So that's actually not too bad. I have the size at 18, the opacity all the way, and then you can choose what color you want. I think we'll stick with this color for now. And then I added in more strokes. So basically this works like layers in Photoshop. You can add in as many strokes as you want and you just have to remember that the stroke that's underneath will be underneath the other one. So you can see here that the uh, light brown is over top of the green one that I just added in. So if I brought the size down, it's just, it's occluded by the one over top of it. So we want it to be a lot higher than the other one. So right about there looks pretty good. And then we'll add in another one underneath it for like a lighter green. I think that's too saturated. Sure, say okay about that. And then let's add in, because obviously we don't wanna use the actual red color that I brushed with. We'll do a color overlay and pick our own color. So I added in this greenish color, but if we wanted like freaking snowy peaks, we could do something like that. Doesn't look too bad, let's keep it. Let's say okay with that. Now, we can add in the actual beaches, the actual sand around the sides. And that is with outer glow. 
So normally the outer glow would be on screen, but we don't want it to be on screen. We want it to be on normal. So put that on normal, bring the opacity all the way up. I added some noise to it. See, it does this grainy effect to it. So I put it down pretty low, but it kind of makes it look like sand somehow. Make sure you give it like a nice bright sandy look. And then I, I added a gradient so it goes from fully opaque sand color to a transparent color. I mean, heck, we could bring it out a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. Yeah, let's say it fades from fully opaque to 30% opacity. Okay with that. And then the spread I have it to and the size at 62. I made my own custom curve for the gradient. See how the sand has kind of like ripples on the outside of it? So I just went in here and I just gave it some inconsistencies with the curve. That looks pretty good. Now let's do a drop shadow, which if you look at islands, you see a lot of times from satellite images, islands really spread out under the water and it's like kind of dark looking. So let's kind of do that same thing here with a drop shadow. So just make it normal. Let's make it really dark. Keep the distance at zero. Let's make the spread a lot higher. Okay, so you can see how it's spreading out here and that looks pretty crazy. So let's just kind of find a good spot. Bring the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, around 75 looks good. And I think this might be good. So now that we have this here, I can just start painting away and Photoshop automatically updates. To make the island look realistic with all these inconsistent edges, no, none of these edges are sharp, right click your brush. If you hit B, that goes to brush and you right click. Normally you would have just a circle brush like this and that's kind of boring because as you can see here, it's just like ugh, hard edges, not cool. So if you right click, um, Photoshop comes with a bunch of standard brushes that I think uh, add some pretty interesting stuff but get one that has a lot of noise on the edges so i like this one it's called a chalk brush and uh it just has a lot of here if i turn off all the effects you can see it's just got like some noisy edges to it and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it all right so let's add in some cool looking islands And if you want to subtract some of your island, just hit E to erase. Pick your noisy brush and just start sculpting your island. It's your island. Make it how you want. There we go. Have a little bit of something there. A little island over here. There. I want a snowy peak. The further out you, you make your island, the higher up the mountain climbs and then it automatically makes snowy peaks. All right, that looks pretty good. Well, that was pretty fun. I hope you guys found that interesting. If you guys would like me to do some more stuff like this, heck, if you guys would like me to use this tool and make some uh, popular maps, like, I don't know, Fortnite map, the Witcher map, whatever you guys are thinking. That, I, I think that would be pretty fun. If you guys think that would be interesting, comment below and maybe I'll make another video on remaking a island with this uh, Photoshop tool. So that was it. Thanks for watching. And if you guys find this kind of stuff interesting, if you like the look of our game, The Pedestrian, that's normally what we show on this channel. So subscribe and uh, we'll have more stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching.